there are a few horrible things about maladaptive daydreaming. Actually, there's quite a few. In this video, I am going to be sharing with you um, what I will the list that I could come up with of the top 10 worst things about maladaptive daydreaming for me at this point in my life. Before I start, let me just say there are good things about maladaptive daydreaming that's actually the problem. Um, so yes, I do know that there are good things about maladaptive daydreaming, but I'm not talking about them in this video, so... Number one. I don't know if it's just me, but... well, no, I'm sure it's not, but... I am always tired. Like, always tired. I have a problem where I go to sleep on time, no worries, but when I wake up in the morning, it doesn't matter what time, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, my brain is like, get up. Right now. And in the morning, I always want to get up as soon as I can because I panic and think I'm not going to have enough time to daydream. And does anyone else experience this where you, when you wake up in the morning, you have this horrible f feeling like you're not going to have enough time to daydream unless you get up right now? Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> it's not fun. Number two. I really want to know if this happens to anyone else <laughs> or if anyone else feels this way, but when I'm out in public, I feel like I just look lost because I will be walking and then I'll just stop and look around. I'm not lost. I'm lost in my head, but I'm not lost, if you get what I mean. And I really want to know if anyone else feels this way because when I've had people I've had people come up to me and ask me if I'm lost when I'm... <laughs> yeah, so I always look lost when I'm out in public. <laughs> Number three. So this kind of is like the last one where when I'm in public and I make and I talk to myself, or I make weird facial expressions, or I laugh at nothing, then people look at me funny. Yeah. I think this is one of the biggest problems <laughs> faced, or like shared problems. Um, between people who melted up from daydream is getting weird looks in public when you talk to yourself. Because I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> number four. I hope I'm actually up to number four. Three. Four. Yes, I'm up to number four. So number four. I always have sore feet. Always have sore feet. Because what pacing is one of my triggers so I pace a lot a lot um, I there was a like it's not uncommon for me I have a I have a fitness watch it's not uncommon for me to do over 30,000 steps a day and I see, and I see people put on um, 
and I see people put on their story or oh, their yeah their stories on Instagram about how they did twenty thousand steps after they did like some walking thing for charity and stuff and how oh look at how many steps I did and I'm just like what what and I realize oh it's not normal to do 30,000 steps a day hmm. number five so this one um, does not help with the previous four but I never want to be at home I always want to be somewhere new and I don't ever want to be at home I just want to go out and I want to walk around new places and I don't want to walk in the same place for longer than a couple of weeks like do you get me <laughs> like I always have to be in a new environment otherwise I can't daydream. I don't know if anyone else experiences this and I really want to know if you do but being in the same place for too long is doesn't work for me. I always have to be somewhere new which is exhausting but number six it takes me forever to do things like forever the simplest of tasks take me so freaking long, so long for me to do. This was really bad when I was at uni because my assignments would take forever to do and I was forever doing things at the last minute. Also like simple tasks like editing a video takes forever because my brain doesn't like me. Also reading a book which I used to be able to do in a couple of days will take me six months. It's horrible. <laughs> Number seven, forgetting things. So you know how you walk into a room to go and get something and then immediately forget why you're in the room? Yeah, that happens to me all the time. And Sometimes someone will ask me if I can empty a bin and I will say, okay, walk, turn around and the bin will only be a couple of steps away. Walk straight past the bin and then stop because I've realized I'm meant to be doing something and I've completely forgotten what I've meant to do. I have to go back to the person and ask them what they wanted me to do. Please tell me I am not the only one that this happens to. This is so annoying. And sometimes I will be like, okay, I need to put this in my bag and I will be sitting on my bed. Get up from my bed, like half a second later and forget what I'm supposed to be doing. This happens to me all the time and it is so annoying. Number eight. Yes, this is number eight. I don't have a social life. I do not have a social life. I am so busy tending to my brain's needs that I don't have time to have a social life. I am too busy walking through 30,000 steps a day, forgetting things and taking and simple tasks taking me, you know, hours to do and being too tired to have a social life, which is really upsetting. I want to have a social life, I really do, but at this point in my life, my, my brain just, it's not gonna let me have a social life, or at least not a very stable one or a very active one. So for now, I don't have much of a social life, but I am working on that. So I've already mentioned this, but I used to be able to read like a book that would take me two days to read 
now takes me six months to read. Um, so number nine is I cannot read. Like it takes me forever to finish a book, which is actually really upsetting for me. I used to be a very big bookworm and I would eat them. Not literally eat them, but I would read so many books and now I struggle to finish one book. Um, this is something I'm definitely working on, trying to, you know, focus my brain long enough to finish a book. And it's not just, I don't, I'm not triggered by books or reading. The problem is, when I'm sitting still, I panic because I think I'm not going to have enough time to daydream. So when I'm sitting still reading, and no, I'm not going to pace while reading my book. <laughs> um, when I'm sitting still reading, I just, I feel like I need to go out and do stuff. And at night, when, at night when I feel like it's okay and I've daydreamed enough for the day, I can't read the book because I'm so exhausted from all this, the pacing and the 30,000 steps and the daydreaming, so I, I just can't read. And <laughs> um, So, number 10 is the worst thing at the moment for me, and I feel like it's always going to be the worst thing for me, and I know that most people, or at least a lot of people with who melted up in daydream, this is the worst thing for them. Um, it's the feeling you get when you remember that your universe that you've created in your head isn't actually real. And this is a problem, a very big problem, because it upsets me when I remember that it's not real and I've kind of make up in my head that they are real they're just in a parallel universe and you know somewhere far away they're real um, but no they're, they're not and that's hard to admit for people I think well definitely is for me and I know it is for a lot of people so yeah that's that's my worst thing Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I actually feel like this video is finally a good video with good stuff in it. Or one that wasn't just thrown together. Um, which is great because that's, that's an achievement for me. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, um, whether it's morning or afternoon or night or anything. But thank you so much for watching and remember stay unique.